وليس بمولود وليس بوالد وليس له شبه تعالى المسبح وقد ينكر الجهمي هذا وعندنا بمصداق ما قلنا حديث مصرك رواه جرير عن مقال مقال محمد تقول مثل ما قد قال في ذاك انجح Who's reading English for us? I can say uh, Bismillah. And he was not born, nor, nor has he fathered anyone, nor is there any anything similar to him. Exalted and glorified his case. And indeed, Jahmi rejects this. Uh, however, we have as confirmation of what we say, a clarifying hadith. Jarir narrated it from the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So say what he said concerning that issue and you shall succeed. Uh, so this, the, the first two lines, um, they're talking about, we talked about this first uh, last week, was the last thing that we mentioned, where uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not born, nor does he father any children. And we said that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above this, and this is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Right? قُلُوا اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ السَّمَتْ All the way until the end of it. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولِدْ And so on. And today what we are going to continue from is the line وَقَدْ يُنْكِرُ الْجَحْمِيُّ هَذَا وَعِنْدَنَا بِمِصْدَاقِ مَا قُلْنَا حَدِيثٌ مُصَلَّحُ That the jahmi, a person that is a jahmi, we said it is a person that follows the aqeedah or the beliefs that were introduced by Jahm ibn Safwan um, who took his aqeedah from Ja'd ibn Dirham and their aqeedah was basically a, um, you know, some of the Yahudi beliefs taken mixed up with philosophy to get to the point where you reject everything that has come from you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his sifat, regarding his beautiful names, regarding his perfect attributes and rejecting them and saying this is not what they actually mean but they mean something else uh, because logically it does not make sense to us and then this is um, you know it is resembling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the creation. And here this line when he says وَقَدْ يُنْكِرُ الْجَهْمِيُّ أَيْضًا what he's talking about is the line before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be seen on the Day of Judgment. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be seen by the believers on the Day of Judgment and they're going to see him uh, in Jannah as well. So it is a rejection rejection of that, like complete rejection. That you're not going to see Allah on the Day of Judgment, nor are you, you will never be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then he says, بِمِصْدَاقِ مَا قُلْنَا حَدِيثٌ مُصَرَّحُ but this is like, this goes against the authentic ahadith, it goes against the authentic, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that we are going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, رواه جرير عن مقال محمد He says, it is Jarir radiallahu anhu who narrated this hadith, that we are going to see it, even though it is Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajari, uh, the one that, he's not the only one that narrates this hadith. This is a hadith, the hadith of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is hadith that are mutawatir. Many, many companions of the Prophet وسلم, have narrated this. The reason he puts jarir, and for those of you that have been coming to the classes for a while, this is the second time you would hear the name jarir in the, uh, whenever we've done, you know, we did the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, a while back, and his name was also mentioned. Um, where it says, وَمَاتَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فِي عَامِ الْأَخِيرِ وَالْبَجَلِيُّ أَسْلَمَ وَاسْمُهُ جَرِيرِ When we did the, the 100 line poem on the life of the Prophet وسلم, he says, in the last year, Ibrahim passed away. Ibrahim, the son of, uh, the, son of the Prophet وسلم, And it is also in this year, وَالْبَجَلِيُّ أَسْلَمَ That Al-Bajali, who is Jarir ibn Abdullah Al-Bajali, became a Muslim. And we said the reason why he mentions him outside of all of the other companions, and the reason why he's mentioned also here, it is because he is from the famous companions of the Prophet وسلم, that go on to become teachers and they teach people. He is from those that embrace Islam last. So when you use it, you say, this is the one that came at the end. And whenever he is mentioned, it means that whatever he says, these are the things that the Prophet wasallam is telling the companions at the end of his life, and this is what stays here. The other time that we said this comes up, um, for those that came to our fifth class, when we talked about wiping over the socks, wiping over the socks, they used to ask Jarir, when you uh, learned how to make wudu, was it before the Sulamai that was revealed, or was it after? And he would say, I became a Muslim after it was revealed. So the mess was something that uh, the Prophet ﷺ would do. So he does the same thing here. And it is not to mean that it is only Jarir that narrates this hadith about seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these are hadith that are mutawatir. There are so many companions, Umar, Ali, Aisha, 
Abu Dhar, so many of them, they narrate the fact that on the Day of Judgment, we are going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith that he's referring to here, the hadith of Jarir, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he comes out one day to the companions, and it is a full moon. And he tells them, do you guys have an issue looking at the moon? Do you have a problem seeing the moon? And they said, no, we see it, right? Like we see this. Uh, and this goes back to the line that came before, كَمَ الْبَدْرُ لَا يَخْفَى وَرَبُّكَ أَوْضَحُ Right, like Allah, like just like the moon on a clear night is not hidden, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be more clear, like it's going to be easier for you to see Allah, than it is for you to see the full moon in the desert on a clear night. So this is the hadith, so the Prophet sallam, he comes up, he says, do you have a problem seeing this? They said, no, we see it clearly, all of us are looking, and we all see it, right, no one is... Because of how many people are there, it does not mean that you know it becomes difficult for you to see it. So the Prophet ﷺ, he says, on the day of judgment, you are going to see Allah more clear than this. And the increase of people, the fact that there's going, all of creation is going to be there, it is not going to make it difficult for a person uh, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the uh, you know from the mutawatib that uh, the Jahmi has to go against. Um, and generally, the way that when they try to go against the hadith and the Quran, they'll try to ex- try to explain it away first. That's the first step. How can we say this is not how it's going to happen? Or they go and they say this is a strange a hadith, or this is a singular report, and we're not going to take it. We do not take it in matters of aqidah, but this is a matter that is very clear with the hadith of Abu Tawatib. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us with the ability to see him under the of judgment and also in Jannah. Amen. Next one. Please. And then there is that in the hadith of Musabah, like it's very clear hadith. Right? It's not it's not hadith that are there's no ambiguity to it when it comes to actually seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like so. Up to this. My English, Bismillah. What was that one way? Uh, and certainly uh, Jahmi will deny his right hand as well. While both of his hands are giving out, uh, giving out all kinds of bounties. Uh, here, he says, وَقَدْ يُنْكِرُ الْجَهْمِيُّ عَيْضًا يَمِينَهُ They reject the right hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us inside of the Quran, that he has a right hand. وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطُوِيَّاتٌ بِيَمِينِ That the heavens are going to be rolled up with his right hand. Uh, but the reality of it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know, he says, وَكِلْتَ يَدَيْهِ Both of his hands. From here, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. Right? How do we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands? First, we look in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He describes himself, he says uh, to Iblis, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْهِ خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْهِ What is preventing you from making sujood to that which I have created with? بِيَدَيْهِ is two hands. That's one. Like what, what is preventing you from making sujood? To the one I created with my two hands. Jahm ibn Safwan, his way to get around this, he says, this means the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah created him with his qudra. Doesn't make sense. Because we do, it's impossible for Allah to have two qudras. For Allah to have two powers. And what is the difference between Adam alayhi salam and all of creation? If everyone is created, because we're all created by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It is the qudra of Allah that created us. So why is he saying that I have created with my hands, if it is not referring to the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is one. The second thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us about the statement that the Yahud make, and they said, Yadullahi maghlula. Right? That the hands of Allah are chained. And they are, like they don't give, Allah is stingy and so on. And Allah is free from these. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ The hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are open. But the open that is being mentioned here, it is a مَبْسُوطَتَانِ means is to for what? One, or two, or three, or more. Two. For two. مُذَنَّ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ Two of them. Right? Two of them, this is what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. He says his hands are open and they're spending. Allah is spending on the people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the hands of Allah are filled. And he continues to give day and night. And it does not decrease from his kingdom at all. Do you not see how much Allah has been given since the creation of Adam to mankind and until the day of judgment? And it does not decrease anything from what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
Uh, this is from the Quran, from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He refers to the hands of Allah and he says, uh, He says, both hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are right hands. And the scholars, they say when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying this, it is to remove the doubt that a person would think that Allah has a left hand, and that left hand, what we associate with it, is going to be associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hands, and anything that is going to come, like the face of Allah, like the shin of Allah, and so on, the understanding of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is in between two extremes. You have two extremes that come, and Ahlul Sunnah are in between. There are some that came, like Jahum Safwan, complete rejection of it. That Yad is not how we understand it. That Waj face is not how we understand it. That Shin is not how we understand it. And complete removal of these things from how they are understood to mean something else. Right? And they went extreme in, in negating the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other side, you had a people that came. And they went so far in affirming it that they went and they said the hands of Allah are like the hands of His creation. That the face of Allah is like the face of the creation. That the shin of Allah is like the shin of the creation. So they went in extreme in affirming these attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we're not in these two groups. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when it comes to the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we affirm what Allah has told us about them. We say Allah has hands because Allah told us He has hands. But we do not go into what do they look like? How do they look? What do they do? What side? We, we don't do any of that. Allah told us that, uh, you know, that it is going to be, the samawat are going to be wrapped up in his hands. Khalas. This is going to happen. Allah has that and so on. So we don't uh, yes. negate them to completely saying that these are, everything is metaphorical when it comes to the sifat of Allah. Nor do we go all the way and say they are like the hands of the creatures. Or whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Uh, the other group's name. Mujassiwa. Mujassiwa. Mujassiwa, you're dead with the... The Hawashi or Hashwi, how many different names that they have in our times? Uh, Bismillah, any other questions here? So, so uh, Shaykh, when you mentioned that they in case neglected uh, I mean, the hand of Allah and all of that, yeah. does it mean they neglected the ayah in the Quran or they neglected taking no. it as, as it is? Taking it as it being a hand and explaining it to be something else. So, saying, for example, that the hand that is referred to means power, it means blessings, it means um, favors of Allah, these different things. Metaphors. Metaphors of it, like, you know, instead of hands, something else that could mean yet. Right? And then when they took this, they were, because the whole purpose of it is, when you say Allah has hands, you don't want to actually say Allah has hands. But for Ahlul Sunnah Jama'ah, this is how Allah described Himself. Khalas, do we say this? We don't go into the the kafiyat of how, how they actually are and so on. We leave it as has been transmitted to us through the Quran the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right. And did waqad yunkab waqad waqad sin? Al-qad li tahqiq. So qad in the Arabic language it serves two purposes. Either for taqleel or for tahqiq. Taqleel meaning that something that rarely happens. Uh, for example you would say qad yajud al bakhilu Right? Like the Bakhil is not generous, but it's rarely possibly he will be generous. And then other times, Qad is used for tahqiq. In the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Qad sami Allahu, like haqqan Allah heard these. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflah al mu'minun, this is every time, like haqqan, this is what happens. The believers are successful. Right? So when he's saying it, he is like, well, they clearly, right? Waqad yunkir wal jahmiyu hadha. This belief, the Jahmi, without a doubt, not really, without a doubt, he rejects these things. First of all, why can you mention that after the bait? What is it? 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 يرجع إلى البيت الذي قبله. بسم الله. So this other group which compares Lazak with with creation like end of a life like us like do they give any proof or I mean they say this is what it says. But we have this idea that there is nothing like. 
Yeah, so uh, they don't care for that ayah. And this is also a very small minority of group. Right? They didn't, because of what it meant, they didn't grow as much as the followers of Jahm and Safwan. Okay. Right? So theirs is like, you just see them being mentioned like, oh, these are people that claim that Allah has, you know, a body like the body of man, that Allah has a body like the body of uh, a face, like the face of, uh, of the people. Uh, and then they usually, like, if they say, what's the proof for this? They say, uh, you know, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talks about Adam alayhi salam, he says that Adam alayhi salam was created ala suratihi, like, at, at, at his uh, surah. And they say the surah, the abdameer uh, here goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Adam was created to look like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though we know this is not how Arabic works, usually the dhameer, it goes back to al-aqrab uh, al-mathkur, like the thing that is mentioned right before it, right? So you would say that it is, you would say that Adam was created on his surah, like he himself was created on this surah, the way that uh, it is before jumping all the way back to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is what they would hang around with and uh, use it to say, this is Allah is just like us in terms of the things that he has. But this is not, this is not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Why? Because he says, like, do you know like, any equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and that, do not make rivals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means do not make rivals, like, think similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, again, right? And then uh, the, uh, the last uh, ayah of ikhlas. Uh, what's the last ayah of ikhlas? <laughs> Nobody is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so his creation can never resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we used to say. No, Allah's hands are not like our hands. It's a completely he shape. Right, nothing's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, you're talking about groups, right? Yeah. I think even within that terminology, my approach from you, that um, you have terms to describe. So, yeah. So, it's, you know, we haven't mentioned, like, we learned the young that he asked that he has to. Yes. So, could you talk about, like, and tell you, Shaira, this thing, even within, like, and those are the two ones that So, so uh, when it comes to the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Asha'ira, they have, they are closer to the, uh, to the Aqeedah of Jahum al Safwan than to the Aqeedah of the Sunnah al Jawah. Like, what they come after this, this thing is, like, their popularity is after this thing is written, but these are some of the things that they picked up from uh, Jahum al Safwan. So, in the way that they look at uh, the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, and, you know, try to do, uh, you know, try to do ta'wil of it, trying to change the way that uh, it comes and so on. So these, these people, are like, where are these? Where, where do I find the Shaira? Like, the Shaira predominant in these states? So, and the thing... Like, yeah, so the things with, uh, with Aqeedah, when it comes to the beliefs, uh, we said, you know, the first day that we were together, that Aqeedah, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, is the easiest one. So Aqeedah of the laymen, even according to the books of the Asha'ira themselves, the Aqeedah of the lay people is the Aqeedah of like the Athari Aqeedah. And they say that because they're ignorant, they're not going to be held responsible for it. But the reality of it is different than this. The reality is this is the most sound of Aqeedah. That's why majority of the people have it. So if you were to say like, go to India, for example, uh, go to West Africa, go to East Africa, go to uh, you know the land of the Muslims, you would generally find even if, like amongst the laymen that the beliefs that they have when it comes to these things that we have covered, this haqidah here, this is what you would find, right? Like the next line is going to tell us about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. If you ask someone, random Muslim, pick him up and say, does Allah descend? They're not going to tell you, no, it's his command that is descending. It's a malaik, it's an angel that is coming down. They say, Allah descends in the last third of the night. This is why we get up to do these things. Right, so this is uh, like these are not things that you are going to find amongst the laymen. You find amongst those that have either learned a little bit or they've learned for a while, and this is the aqidah that they have chosen to do. That's what we say. So it's hard to say this is where you find uh, where you find the majority of the people that follow this. That's right. So uh, again, uh, like Egypt is not. Uh, we have a few Egyptians here, right? Uh, even if this is the the aqidah of the school, it does not mean this is the aqidah of the people. Because this is aqidah that needs to be taught for the people to understand, right? Because when you come to these clear signs, right away you're going to be like, oh, this is what, like, no one rejects the fact that we're going to see Allah on the Day of Judgment as a layman. 
no one rejects that. He looks at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Ila Rabbi hana adhala, it's going to, khalas. We want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's just how it is. But when you go into the studying, that's when these kind of, uh, these issues of aqidah come out. Huh? So there's a just kind of, so we basically, in, in uh, regards to Ahmasan Jamal, we just, we affirm his attributes, but we don't do some things we'd have to tell. Yes. Thank you. Yes. We don't reject it. We don't try to distort the meaning, nor do we give uh, similarities to it to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, stay. Next slide. Oh, for sure. Uh, that group that you explained the the opposite of the, yeah. What were they called again? Uh, yeah, probably just say Mahashawi. Okay. Different names they have given to them. Uh, next slide. وقل ينزل الجبار في كل ليلة إلى كيف جل الواحد المتمدح إلى طبق الدنيا يمن بفضله فتفرج أبواب السماء وتفتح يقول ألا مستغفر يلقى ظافرا ومستمنع ومستمنح خيرا ورزقا فيمنح روى ذلك قوم لا يرد حديثهم ألا خاب قوم uh, English. Uh, and say they ever compare him descends each night without asking how. Magnificent is the one God, is the perfect one of all place he is worthy. Down to the lowest heaven, granting bounties from his grace as the gates of the heavens are open and spread widely. He says, is there anyone seeking forgiveness who would like to meet a forgiver or is there anyone seeking gifts of goodness and provisions so he would be given graciously? A group, the Companions, has reported this, whose reports are not to be rejected, but indeed some people have failed belying these narrators. Thus, these were criticized heavily. Uh, uh, here, he is speaking about the Nuzur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nuzul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's descending, it is something that Ahl Sunnah and Jama'at affirm happens every single night of the year in the last third of the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends again from the mutawatir, from a hadith that are narrated by so many of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it is impossible for a person to see that this is a lie, that this is something that someone just made up and decided, khalas, this is what we are going to follow. And uh, they say, uh, these are numerous reports that say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the last third of the night and uh, also descends on uh, the day of Arafah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws near and he comes to ila tabaq dunya yamunnu bi fadlihi that he comes to the low, like the, the lowest level of the skies. And uh, as we know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has created how many skies? Seven. seven of them on top of one another. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj, he goes through these seven heavens and he meets different uh, different prophets at each uh, one of these. And we know that above them is where Jannah is. Above these seven is where Jannah is. And we know that what we see when we look up, what we see when we look up, this is the Sama'u uh, dunya right? Uh, Every star that you are able to see while in this dunya, this is the one of this, like just this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, uh, that we beautified it with the stars that you see up uh, over there. So even no matter how far away they say that these are, this is all from the sama of this dunya, the first level of it. Above it, there are six others. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, that between them, uh, is 500 years of travel to go from one to the next to all the way there. And just like there are seven skies above us, we know that there's a total of how many lands? How many earths? Seven. Uh, uh, eight lands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the sky of the heaven. He comes to it and he says, here he says, Ala mustaghfirun Is there somebody that is seeking forgiveness so that they can meet forgiveness? This is not what... Uh, how the hadith goes, but this is like you know making it into a poem. Uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says is what? Hal min Is there someone that is seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive him? Hal min Is there someone that is asking so that whatever they're asking for can be given to them? 
uh, and then uh, the last one uh, is there someone that is making dua so that their dua could be responded to right and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes these are the three things that he is telling the people when it comes to this belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending the issue that uh, Jahmud ibn Safwan read into <laughs> and those that follow him was this, the statements that the companions are saying Allah says right the statement of هل من مستغفر is there someone مستغفر فأغفر له so that I can forgive him you have the people say this is the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the command of Allah descends why are they saying this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the action of nuzul of coming it means that there's a place somebody comes from right and settles in another place and then leaves that place and goes back to that place. Right? So they say, you are saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things that do not befit him. And the sunnah wal jama'ah, this is not what they say. What do they say? وَقَدْ يَنْزِلُ الْجَبَّارُ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ بِلَا كَيْفٍ Without telling you, how, how does Allah do it? I don't know. Allah didn't tell me that. What did Allah tell me? He comes down. So for you to ask me, does he leave that place to come? I don't know. All I know is Allah comes down. And he tells me these things. So they said the Amr, the, the Amr of Allah comes down. And then they said it is a malaika, an angel, from the angels of Allah that descends. Or the Rahmah of Allah descends. And let's just say it is the Rahmah of Allah. Or let's just say it's the malaika. It is a, an angel able to say to creation, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرُ له. Is there someone that is seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive them? Because this is what the hadith told us. The Amr of Allah subhanahu What is the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When it comes down, is the Amr talking? And is it, how does it talk? Where are you getting all of these from? Allah comes and this is what Allah says to the people. That if this is the case, this is what we believe in. How does he do it? How is it possible for Allah to descend every single night? When every day is daytime here, it's nighttime somewhere else. When it's night here, it's daytime somewhere else. So is Allah just constantly like up and down? I don't know. This is what, what's happening is you are taking uh, the limitations that the creation have in terms of night here, day there, night there, day here, and saying, okay, this has to apply to Allah if you say that he descends. And this is the biggest issue that Jahm and Safwan fell into was that in his attempt to try to tell the people that Allah is not like the creation, he had to first make them believe, or he himself had to believe that Allah is exactly like the creation. And from there, he had to work backwards to try to negate it. So when he sees that Allah descends, he's, in his mind, he believes Allah, like a body, has to descend. And that descending is from one place to another. And if that's the case, Allah cannot do that. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the no. Allah told you, the Prophet ﷺ, in Mutawatir, a hadith is telling you this happens every single night. Khalas, we're going to believe it in this way. This is what Allah told us. We don't know how Allah does it. We don't get into those things. But we affirm this as being uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Can you please explain, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr? So, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr is the Quran. Right? The Quran being sent down on laylat al-Qadr in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends it, uh, he sent it from uh, all the way to Bayt uh, al Ma'mur. And uh, it was from there, it was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, on the night of Laylat al Qadr. Right? Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when, whenever He talks about uh, like things being sent down from, uh, from the heavens to this dunya, whether it is the Quran, whether it is uh, you know, different things that come, like the rain coming, uh, we understand from it. Like how did it actually happen? But when we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the other ayahs that we mentioned like لَيْسَ كَمَثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ تَعْلَمُ وَالْعُسَمِيَّةِ أَوَ لَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادَ لَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ قُطْوَانَ أَحَدْ And so on. No, we don't know how this actually happens with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The other thing, uh, when he says Jabbar, uh, uh, there's a reason why he chooses the name Jabbar over any other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Jabbar mean? Somebody tell me what does Jabbar mean? Ever compelling? The ever compelling. Is that what it says in this? It says the ever compelling? Yeah, and Jabarut. Sahil Jabarut. Go in the Lord Kingdoms. Yeah? Well, when something broken, then you uh, fix it, mend it together. Jabbar. Another, another, another meaning of it. Jabbar 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is from the Asma, from the names of Allah. Allah says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, He's the one that commands His servants to do as they do. Like the things that are happening, Allah is above these things. Like He has forced them to be in this situation of this is how you live in this dunya, this is what you do, and so on. Jabbar, what it means. It means the one that is able to do to his creation whatever he wills. His creation have no say in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. Why did he use this here? When we say creation, don't think about it just as you and I, as human beings. Everything is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Allah, right? The skies, time itself. Did Allah create time? No. Yes, without doubt, Allah created time. Allah created space. Everything that is outside of Allah, when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Rabbil Alameen. Al Alameen, what it means. Everything, Kullu Shayin Allah. Everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created these things. If that's the case, how are we going to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be limited by day here, night there? Or day there, night here? Allah can compel these things to do what He wants. Why? Because he's Al-Jabbar. This is what he's able to do. Time, does it have an effect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Without a doubt, it does not. Right? Time does not, space does not have an effect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator of these things. So this is what he's trying to make us understand. That these doubts that might come of how, you know, if um, some parts of the world are up, other parts of the world to us are down. Right? Day and night. How can Allah be up all of the time when the guy all the way down south pointing up and me pointing up, we're pointing at different directions. This only works if we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compelled by his creation. But because he's al-Jabbar, he's the one that is compelling the creation, then khalas, these are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about. Them. So, uh, so, so the question arises to me, because if like you said, for a layman, this is completely true. Yeah. But when you're talking in the field of dawah, and yeah. you're talking to people who do not believe, but, uh, how, how is it possible for us to actually relay this idea that we're talking about? Because I found it easier to actually explain it. The, the way of the others. Yes, because I mean, then again, the question comes up that you uh, Muslims have a Quran that was revealed upon you and you still do not know uh, what Allah is, how he is, yeah. and the things he does. Uh, so, I mean, being like going up upon the words that, that have been revealed is understood for us, but if it's harder to... It's in the field of doubt. How do we do it? I, 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 I think the way that we should think about it is this is the idea of uh, like explaining the nuzul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's say to a non-Muslim, to a Christian, right? Um, it should be a, they, their belief is that their God came into the dunya and interacted with the dunya itself, right? Went through the stages of uh, like baby. baby and then grew up and go like this. So when you talk to them and you tell them, look, our... Allah, our God, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he can, whatever he wants to do, he's able to do. Everything is un under his control. We were told, we were told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends during the last third of the night. And this descending of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not make similarities to it. Why? Because this is what Allah told us not to do. All right, so that's the first part. The second part is what is preventing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from doing this? Like what is actually preventing Allah from doing it, right? What can, what are they able to say? Now, if you talk to the Yehud, right? The Yehud are a little bit more of, uh, uh, you know, rejecting this idea of uh, uh, the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but their rejection of it are for very different reasons. So you talk to them, things that would make sense to them. But like if you really run into a Yehudi and you're making da'wah to them, uh, very difficult to get them to, uh, you know, to even. Accept it. Now when you go to the atheist, right? Someone that doesn't believe in uh, no sense of God. These are just things, you know, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, whenever they do da'wah, this is our book, this is our sunnah, and this is how we understand them. It's your choice to not come and follow it. Do I, and, and, and this is why I really don't like it. You know, like, usually this happens in debates, right? Not even in like calling them to la ilaha illallah, but it happens in... Let's prove whose religion is. Uh, so you have the doubt in your religion. Leave me alone. Because I, I was saying my experiences, I would say the opposite. I would say keeping it simple. Yeah, seems to have more effect. 
uh-huh. and trying to get it, make it more complicated than what it is. Yeah. I would say, at least in, in every situation I've been in, when I talk, if these type of situations come out, I never get, I never try to use that. So uh, those, those, those ways. Just, yeah. Just say this. So that's in Dawah, right? Yeah. Um, in Dawah, this is obviously the easiest way. The thing more he's saying is, you know, when you get into, this is not a person of yeah. Dawah. Yeah. Not, you're not calling them to La ilaha illallah. He's trying to prove to you the holes in your religion. Right? He's trying to prove to you. Just leave these people off here. Don't waste your time. No, but it happens like uh, <laughs> when you go online, like these are the discussions oh, that they're man. having, right? And these are the discussion people are having. And uh, there was a brother once, he reached out to me recently uh, because the, it's like, you know, when you look at, um, even though this is Aqidah, uh, when you look at, you know, the marriage of the Prophet Sallallahu to Aisha, right? The people that are going to come and talk to you about this are not the people that are here interested in becoming Muslims. There are people trying to say, built on that thing, the rejection of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why we shouldn't follow him? Why Isa is better? Why someone else is better? And so on, right? So to those people, how would you respond? Is this, this ease is not going to be there. And obviously the best way is like, tell us, just, like the man that came to Ibn Malik, uh, and he told him, I want you to debate me and your religious views. And he told him, what would happen if I win? He said, if you win, I will leave off what I believe and follow what you believe. He said, what if I lose? He said, then you will leave what you believe and follow me. He said, you are the one that has doubts in your faith. Mine, I don't have, I have, doubt, I don't have these doubts and they leave me alone. But go, go argue with another fool that wants to sell his, his thing, you know? Meaning like, there's nothing that you're going to say. Even if you defeat me in a debate, that's going to leave me, make, like, I don't have doubts in this iman that I have. Right? I don't have doubts in this aqidah that I believe in. I don't have doubts in the seal of the Prophet You are the one that is doubtful enough to say, if you lose, you follow this way. I don't that's not how I go argue with somebody else, right? There's that, but it's so hard sometimes, right? That's, that's what we give people, that. People try to use their own kalam or philosophy to justify Islam when you should be trying to. The Quran and Sunnah is enough for us, yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. here's a question that I have uh, when it comes to Nazul. Um, I mean, there's a third of the night any time of the day because the world has been so. So, how do you make sense of that, or you don't, you just accept the fact that? Allah comes down on that side of the night. Somebody answer for us. Let's accept. Let's accept. Huh? Allah, Allah, there you go. Allah's jabba. This only works for me. Right? Like, the fact that it's night here, day there, only, like, only limits me as a human being. But it is not limiting the creator of these things. Right? Uh, so that's what we say. Allah is a jabba. Allah, we don't know how he does it. I have no idea how this happens. <laughs> what do we know is how it does happen? <laughs> He's saying what the day of the Qadr is. Like the the Qadr. We have to believe it. Yes, God. Yeah. How does it happen? How does it work? Huh? And also, to should our man, shouldn't we just accept also this, I mean, and this aspect of questioning every single thing is like a sickness. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's like a sickness. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, can't, and, this, and, he, yeah. and it, comes, it becomes more of like a problem in your heart. And so it's like, you know what, so call all call all over soon. Let's say it's right. It's right. We seem to follow. Hey, yeah. you know, um, what should we do is when this type of doubts come to us since May. Because mm-hmm. it can come in. Uh, we are exposed to so many things. That we're like we have to hear people's argument and yeah. may Allah protect us. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. But what, what we should do as, uh, you know, like. When doubts come to us. Yes. Okay. And da. Uh, Make da. Make da. One of those things, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and then like they said all of it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then what's the dua that they make? لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا ربنا من لدك رحم إنك أنت الوهاب خلاص يا الله after you've guided us do not misguide us do not let doubts be introduced to us but you know you have to look at this ayah this is in Ali Imran and you think why is Allah why is والراسخون في العلم you know, ar rasikh like this is not is not us. Okay. Ar rasikh fil like somebody that is deep inside of knowledge, rooted, root like it's there's no moving this person from this knowledge. Why is his du'a, Rabbana la tuzikulubana ba'da id hadithana? Why is he so worried about misguidance coming? Because of him being rooted in knowledge, this fear is there. But at the same time, because of his that rooted that that him being so rooted in this knowledge, those doubts are not going to come to him. Why did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continue the most famous du'a of his, the one that he would make the most? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
or change of the hearts. Keep my heart steadfast on your religion. Why? Because I know these things are going to come. But what? how do I get it? I seek knowledge. That is the only way that doubts disappear from a person. Right? Doubts come from unknown. Once you know, these are going to go away. So uh, the problem with, like, with us as Muslims is that we have neglected the seeking of knowledge. Yes. Like completely. And because of that neglect, these doubts come to you and, they, and they're able to you know, come and root themselves inside of your heart. Then you begin to have these issues. And when I say that we've completely abandoned like, the seeking of knowledge, if you look just a couple hundred years ago in the lands of the Muslims, you would be able to walk into any major city, into any major masjid that is there, and you would have hundreds of halaqat in every single masjid. In this corner, this person is teaching this. In this corner, this person is teaching this. In this place, this is, like, this is going on. And the people without choice, they will pray their salah and they'll just end up sitting. This is a gathering of tafsir that is going on. This is a gathering of hadith that is going on. This is a gathering of fiqh or, or lugha or whatever it is is going on. And they're just listening. So the level of the knowledge that people had before, a lot higher than it is today, even though today it's a lot easier for you to seek knowledge. It's a lot easier for you to uh, like, like actually go and, and, and get on the path of knowledge. You are sitting here, comfortable seats. Your uh, nice lighting is here. Uh, yeah, for the people on Zoom, comfort of their homes, you know, probably drinking their coffee, their tea, having their breakfast. Oh, this is how they're seeking knowledge. Right? When you have the companions of the Prophet ﷺ traveling for a month to seek knowledge, for one hadith, for what purpose? I, doubts can never be in my iman. I cannot have and the, the, the other thing that happened, even those that seek knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, is that this knowledge no longer has the effect that it had on the people before. Knowledge today, the way that we seek it, it doesn't affect the hearts that it did, like it did before. People used to study the Arabic language, not so that they could be fluent in it, but so that they can properly understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger. You know, Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says, never learn the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that you could say it is the sunnah and I don't have to do it. But that's what happens today. Somebody learns sunnahs of salah. What is he looking for? Oh, you know, when I teach little, like younger kids about salah and I tell them these actions are from the sunnah, the first question that comes, so we don't have to do that. Right? So that's, that's, that's what comes. And this is how we are. We learn so that ibadah becomes... What, what is the minimum that I have to do? Mm. Right? So even before they would learn knowledge, their ibadah would change. The way that they would worship Allah would change. And this is why it's very important that you, you know, you're sitting in these, these places. You're not here just to gather information and go away. You're here for this ilm to actually benefit you in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is, this is why we have like these dots that come. We're not spending enough time uh, you know, learning uh, our religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to continue to study. I mean, uh, we got the uh, descent of Allah to so leave his place and come to another place. And to know the I'm not sure if you said the answer uh, without thought. So Allah, the Nuzul, that's how we describe it. He leaves wherever Allah is. And the, for the believer, is Allah fuq al arsh. He leaves there and he comes to, to the heavens of the sky. This is how. No, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you said the answer of this question. Uh -huh. uh, we don't know if you... We don't know the cave of it. We don't know how. But we know Allah descends. Yeah, but uh, should the answer be... Well, it does not be this. Oh, no. It should not. It should not be that answer. Because it's going to be similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, no. yeah that's, the, that's how we say it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> Just one question. So some of the idol worshippers, right? How when you're going, you talk to certain people and say, they, they stop you at this point right there. So like, why is it hard for you to believe on what can you say unless Jabbar, right? And you have to compel anything. Why is it hard for you to believe that Allah you know, can take form of a human being just to explain things to us pet, right? And why are you, again, you have to think, yeah, the uh, understanding of yeah. what Allah is doing, right? Yeah. And because you guys and you know, the form of that family creation, died, yeah. how do you uh, this, uh, really... this is, I'm guessing these are the Mishalkeen of India. Yeah, it was. And the additional gods and, yeah. uh, and so on. SubhanAllah. Like, they, they won't go past, like, 
you are being limited in your understanding of what Allah can and So Allah has the face of an elephant, huh? Is that what they say? <laughs> like they're gods with the elephant, with the eight heads and so on. Because if you say that he has two hands, he can have six or eight as well. Then like, yeah. If you say he has the face, he can have eight faces. Because at, at the end of it, they say like, that's just one... Uh, one interpretation one, on it. it. Like a manifestation. Yeah. They will still say after all of these... Yeah. You know, all of these other that, things. It's just one of the guy. And uh, they're, 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 they're not washing it. Yeah, uh, do they actually believe they're not mushriki? Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. actually do. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. You're telling me the guy yeah, that yeah. worships the cow yeah. believes he's not a Muslim? No, because they say that they say that basically everything is a manifestation of Allah. Allah. A cow is. Yeah, yeah. So they, say, they say basically everything is manifestation. So there's just one, but everything is. You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like yeah. saying it's one building with multiple rooms, but it's all united. All one with. Uh, yeah. It's the same number of Christian. They say yeah, like, uh, the three. Three uh, but all of them are one. Are one. And then they yeah, say, Quraysh. No, Quraysh is different. At the end, they do say that these are idols. Uh, to get us closer to Allah. Yeah. Yeah. Which is different than saying these are all manifestations of God. Because their idols, the idols of, of, of Quraysh, most of them are things they made with their hands. They mean Jesus. Right? They, so that's what they were, right? Uh, like, they are the ones that are going to get us closer to Allah. Like when they were building the Kaaba. They said, hey, this is the house of God, therefore we cannot use haram money. We're going to only use halal, right? And the man that came to the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, I have seven gods. One is in the heaven, six of them are here. The Prophet ﷺ said, okay, hey, whenever you are in very deep problems, who do you make dua to? He said, the one that's in the sky. Whenever you are in a difficult situation and you want out of it, who do you make dua to? The one in the sky. He said, then what use do you have for the ones that are here? And the guy destroyed his idols and he became a Muslim. All right? Which is different than saying like to them, all of these seven were equal beings. Quraysh never didn't reject the fact that Allah was there. But they rejected the fact that we, you, can, you can go straight to Allah. You can go straight to Allah. No, no. You need... Uh, right? And then even the way that idol worshiping began in Mecca, very different than uh, you know, like places like the actual mushrikeen, mushrikeen. Are. For them... Uh, Amr ibn al-Luhay al-Khuzai he goes and he brings Hubar from Asha and he brings it and he says those people when they want to pray to their gods they pray to Hubar and Hubar takes them there so let us also pray to Hubar and the Kaaba is there he puts them right in front of the Kaaba but anyway it's for, for, like for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not this is how we look at it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created every single being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, the life that we live in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jannah and Jahannam. Allah created the messengers and he set with them his books, his guidance. In the guidance that he has sent to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself in a certain way. As Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we accept the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described himself. We do not add to it. We do not take away from it. We do not make examples of it because this is what Allah has taught us not to do. We do not say that Allah manifests himself in pigs. We don't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come into the dunya and interact with the people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this is not what he does. Right? Allah doesn't take the form of a man. Allah does not uh, you know, take the form of his other creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what he has taught us, our understanding is uh, that all of the names, all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no deficiencies in any of them. And all of creation have deficiencies. All of creation. So if we were to take, for example, the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put it and say that it is similar to our faces, our faces have deficiencies. Some of them are beautiful faces. Some of them are not so beautiful faces. Alhamdulillah, all of you have faces of nur, so you're fine. You know, we just... In general. And then also, we have, I can't see behind my... I, I can't see the back. Right? I can only see so much far this way. That's it. I, I have my allergies now. My nose, half of it is not working. This is from the deficiencies that our, our bodies have. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of these deficiencies are there. Allah is perfect. His sifat are perfect. His names are perfect. And they are how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described himself. Best we can say. Here yeah, they'll come to. Uh, today, I ask a question online. Oh, uh, Bismillah. Someone is supposed to be monitoring our brothers online, but uh, yeah. go ahead. 
So uh, this, before I ask, I want to stop right. So, uh, I'll, uh, in terms of like you know, there there are Christians who say, well, if Allah is omni, you know, omniscient, omnipotent, He could take why can't He like come in the form of a man? And that's because you, you're saying Allah has said explicitly that He doesn't do that. Uh, no, I'm saying this is we don't have proof that Allah has done that. Right? We reject it just because the Christians make a claim that God came in the form of Jesus. Do we reject this claim? Why we reject it? Why do we reject it? Because Allah taught us to reject these things. Right? So because of that, like our belief is built on the Quran and the Sunnah. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He tells us that He He does not have He's not born ever. Right? And Isa alayhi salam, even to those that say that he is God, had to be born. Okay, this is clearly not, you know, uh, not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do. Because it goes against what Allah has told us about himself. I see. So in, in, the, in, in the other example, you said where he doesn't take a form of his creation, uh -huh. is also from like the Quran, like he doesn't take the form of his creation. Where do we get that belief from? Did I say that? Person, no contention. This, yeah, he, he does not resemble his creation. Okay, that's from the Quran as well, because there's nothing yes. like him, right? Yes. That's what we, and then, um, I guess the, the, the final question is, in terms of like him descending uh, in the third of the night, is, is that from the Hadith? And then also uh, to reconcile like how he says he's everywhere, omnipresent, right? Um, he's closer to us than the juggler bay, and then he also descends. How do we reconcile that? If he's everywhere, then how can he also descend? Like, I guess those are the two questions. The, the third of the night, where is that from? Uh, Bilal, speak up. Bismillah. <laughs> and, uh, we don't have the, the idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere all the time. Uh -huh. that's, that's a Hindu concept. That's a Hindu yes. concept. So, it's, do you hear him or no? Can you repeat? Because it's hard to hear other people. Okay, so he said, we don't have the concept that Allah is everywhere. We don't have that concept. The idea that Allah, or the, the belief that Allah is closer to us than our jugular veins, is what? Physically? Or? And abilities. With, that, with the knowledge that he has. Yeah. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he knows from us is what? Aqrabu ilaykum habli warid. Like closer to you than this thing that is here to you. And without a doubt, ah, so we made the faith right now, because this allows you to do it, All right? If you look, how can Allah subhanahu like think think about it this way? Al qurb here, this qurb that is being mentioned near to you, it is is it a qurb like that of nuzul, where nuzul is actually describing the descent of Allah subhanahu wa taala, right? Or is it is closer to you? Al-Habl al more than this. What is the only thing closer to... Is there anything between me and Al-Habl al No, there's nothing between me and Al-Habl al Nothing. Why? Because it's like it's a part of me. So this how... Is more, this is more metaphorically. Or the potential is more... The more than literal it is. That Allah with His knowledge, He's closer to me than this place. And that would make a lot more sense than Him physically being in between... Like what is there between me and... like? What closeness, this qurb here, what closeness is there? Which it's not close to me. What, it is me. What, what we're doing with these, this part coming right now, it's it here, right? Uh -huh, do, doing uh, the thing. So, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the way that when it comes to, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think later on in the poem, is why we're going to talk about the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time that is mentioned in the Qur'an the same? Huh? Will we say it's always the same? Does it say eyes or basir? Sometimes it says basir, sometimes it says a'yun, sometimes it says uyun. So like these, uh, all of these, does it mean every single time that it is the same? Or are there times in which the Arabic language itself allows you, even the English language itself, allows you to use eyes not to mean your eyes here. Yes. Huh? Without a doubt it does. So in those moments, where do you look to to understand how do you get to, like how do you decide which one is, uh, like when, when, when is the Quran being literal and when is the Quran being metaphorical in the way that it describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? How do you decide that? 
you look at how, how do the Arabs understand these things? For well, example, this is where this is where language definitely comes in. There. Without a doubt, you have to have a good understanding of Arabic to really understand these. But without a doubt, right? And I think this is one of the reasons why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala constantly tells you that the Quran is in Arabic, is for you to understand that it has a like it has a role in the way that you understand the Quran, right? When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Be lisan in Arabi mubin," like in the in, in the language of the Arabs, mubin like very clear. So what does that mean? The way that Arabs understand, the way that Arabic is structured is going to be how you understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us where it means, like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, uh, when he talks about bay'at al-ridwan, he talks about bay'at al-ridwan, he uses the word hands, all right? But it, does that hand here, did the Arabs understood it to mean the hands in my khalaq sabiyadi, like with, in, in the hands, they, know, they did not understand it that way. How did they understand it? It Allah aidihim meant that Allah, in the Arabic language, that Allah approved of it. Not that when their hands, when they gave bay'ah like this to each other, that Allah's hand is here like this, the third one. No, the Arabs, when they said, like, my hand is above you, they meant, like, I, I am approving of this thing that you're doing. When you look at, you know, the, for example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the boat of Nuh, of Nuh. Tajri, bi'ayunina, that it moved uh, with our eyes. It doesn't mean that like Allah's eyes moved as, as, as the boat was moving. No. What did it mean? How did they understand? The Arabs, when they would use this kind of phrase, how did they understand it? Understood. Like under our watch. Right? When I say under my watch, does that mean like, like I'm watching this all the time? No, I am aware of this happening. This should not have happened under your watch. You're watching your kids, they break a thing. This should not have happened under your watch. You're working, you, like you understand from it, it means this is how we understand it. Uh-huh. Sheikh, so we talked about uh, Al Jabal, right? Uh-huh. And then you compared the, um, he's closer to you than your next. Uh-huh. So why can't Al Jabal be closer to you by your next, even if it doesn't make sense? And then there's another uh, uh, ayah where he talks about when there's two of you, he was the third when yes. Three is for yeah. So we make such meat there as well. Because this is how the Arabs understood these things. In their speech, when they would speak, this is how they would understand it. Whenever aqrab would be used, what they would mean, like a person would tell you it is closeness to you, that I'm closer to you than your mother and your father. He doesn't mean that physically I'm close to you. And aqrab would be what would be used, what would be, what, what's the like meaning of that statement? I'm closer in, in the affection, or I'm closer to you in the relationship that I have with you. Right? So then when we go from there and we say, There is no secret meeting of three people except that Allah is their fourth. Right? Allah knows what they're talking about here. Allah is there with them. Right? It doesn't matter. Like here, the Arabs in this kind of uh, ibarah that they would use, they would use it to mean, it means that I'm also there, but not like physically there. So basically, the, the matter will be in the Shaira. They make the feed all the time. All of the time. Choose. No, we can make it. We let the Arabic language choose for us. So, but we do not have proof from the Sahaba or, or the Islam uh, talking about it in the way we are talking about it today. Right? We find it from the Sahaba, from the Prophet about making the feet in the ayah when it says that it reads the third or the fourth. Or when you so, the, the third and the fourth, even the hands one. The way that they understood it, how come nobody said, where is Allah's hand here? Right? Where is Allah's hand above our hands? How did they understand it? When Allah told them these things. When Allah told them that in Mecca, Nuh alayhi salam story comes in Mecca. That it's, the boat is, is flowing with it. Abu Jahl, in his attempt to try to discredit the Quran, to say that it is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is from the things that you have came with, Never once told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the companions that this is, you are saying Allah, your Lord has multiple eyes. Because if we took it literally, uh, this is what? This is not, this is more like the jam of, of eyes, like so many eyes. You can tell them, hey, how, how does your Lord have so many eyes? Why? Because the way they understood it was what? means in, under our watch. Allah, so we, we don't have any documented things of them rejecting for example, the istiwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nuzul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these different things, because in their language, this is how they understood it. 
Does that make sense? It does make sense. But in there, I mean, it, it does confuse one if they look at it, right? I mean, if at times we do the same what they're doing, but they're not doing it to discredit Islam or to bring Allah to, to a lower level. Yeah. They're doing it to maintain his integrity and make maintain his hand being Jabbar as well. Mm-hmm. So why is it that we negate their stance? Uh, and and, and they, accept our own, we do yeah. it. Because for them, when they do it to the things that we say you can't do it to, it does not make sense. So then it goes to the rejection of how do you actually understand these things. For example, if today we were to say in every single way that Allah describes himself, we are going to take the metaphorical understanding because these understanding paint a picture to us of Allah actually having these things. Let's say that, right? Because this is their belief. If we were to say that and we come to Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet ﷺ, he says to us, that Musa alayhi salam and uh, Adam alayhi salam are talking to one another. And they're talking about what Allah has done for them. And Musa, uh, uh, Adam alayhi salam says to Musa, like joking with him, you are the one Allah spoke directly to, why did you do what you did? And his response was, you are the one that Allah created with his hands, why did you do what you did? Right? So when we come to this here, is there a difference if we take their belief that what Musa is saying is Allah created him with his power? Is there a difference between the power that was used to create Musa and the power that was used to create Adam? No. Is there a difference? No. Not. How about the blessings? Ni'mah. They say it is the, ni'mah, the ni'mahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it a ni'mah? Is it from the ni'mahs of Allah upon us that you and I are here created? No. Can I say that I was created by the hands of Allah? I was created by the power of Allah. Why is Adam being told that he was created by the hand? What, like why? Why is that so special for him? Why is that so special? If all, because I, my creation and the creation of Adam alayhi salam is the same. If we said it is power, if we said that it is ni'mah, because when they do their uh, the ta'wil of it, when they try to explain it and they say it's metaphorical instead of actually how it is, this is the question that they are unable to answer. So what do you have to do when you come to that? Okay, I do not actually have an answer for the meaning of the ayah. But I have to believe it in this way. Why? Because Allah told me, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ What did Allah say right after? وَالسَّمِعُ الْبَصِيرُ وَالسَّمِعُ الْبَصِيرُ السَّمِيعُ and الْبَصِيرُ These are sifa that we have. Do you hear? Do you see? So why is Allah saying, He's not like His creation, but He hears and He sees. Doesn't His, don't His creation see and hear? It's al-sumir. Huh? It's like the al but is that in the essence of it, is it the difference? Like, for example, here, if we say that we all see, it doesn't necessarily mean that we all see the same. So, some of you, Allah has blessed you with your 2020 vision. Some of us, Allah has uh, glasses, a see some of you, wear your glasses. It, but I can still say that you all hear, right? You, know, you can all see. Our hearing could be different, our sights could be different, but generally, humans. Creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have eyes are able to see. So why is Allah saying there's nothing like him and then using two of the most common descriptions or common uh, you know, things that his creation has? Why didn't he say things that they were unable to do? So there is room of Allah is different from us. Allah is different from us. But at the same time, we do not negate what Allah has told us about. Right? So when you go with the idea of always doing uh, you know, explaining it away, you saying it as metaphorical, you run into so many issues with how you understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, you go to the other hand, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, But the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is impossible for you to explain this away if you say that it means the virtues of Allah. How can Allah have two virtues? How can Allah have two powers? How can Allah have two mercies? How can Allah have two of anything that is being referred to here? And this goes against like how Arabic is structured. So that's why there is, like for example, I know eventually we'll, 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 we'll get to this place. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ar-Rahmanu ala al arsh istawa. That Allah rose above His throne. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, Allah rose above His throne. Khalas, we leave it there. The people came and they said, no, if you say that Allah rose above His throne, it means He created the throne. He was not on the throne, then he rose over it. That does not make sense. 
So they said, you know what it means? Istawa can also in the Arabic language mean istawda, that Allah took dominion over it. Mm. Okay, you know how why this doesn't make sense? I mean, you didn't have it before. In order for you to take something, there was a time that you did not have this claim, but yeah. Right, before you stole that over something. The Malik, when the king used to do, when they say this is, yani stola, this person did this stola, that did not belong to him, he came and he took it. At what time did the Arsh not belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Before it was created? Or during the creation process until it was done? Like, what do you do with these things? You're like, okay. So you see where the, certain places inside of the Quran, because of the Arabic language, we do the wheel of it. Because this is what the air, like this is how the Arabs understand, this is how the Arabic language works. And then there are times where, uh, you know, like you can't do that. Just like in the English that we speak today. If I told you I hit you with my hand, you, how would you, is it, is there any other way for you to understand it except that I hit you with my hand? But if I told you I hit you with my power, uh, you know how they say, uh, you know, when you compare, you know, the eyes of somebody to something beautiful. Does it act like, does that actually mean like your eyes are as bright as the moon or your face is as bright as the moon? That if I bright the face next to you, some of you might think that, you know, this is bright. But if I actually bright, like you would actually be close. No, nowhere close. But we understand from the way that we use language that I like, yeah, this is, you make me as happy as when I see the moon. Khalas, this is what it means. No resemblance from this to that. Right? But if I told you, you have, your eyes are this color. Can I say, this is not what I intend to mean? No, because this is how, you know, language is structured. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be best time. Now with the Jahmi Kip, so they're kind of the first ones who started doing yeah. the nine on Allah's attributes, mm-hmm. right? Can this kind of snowball into becoming worse? Because even people have mercy, people have love. Can they just Without start, a doubt. They'll start saying, oh, we can't say Allah has mercy. Now so mercy so, so this is where the it's issue comes else. from. This is where the issue comes from. Jahmi Safwan. The way that he described Allah, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he says he described Allah by rejecting everything that Allah has described himself with. So he brought another idea of Allah to the people. And this is why like, he was so rejected and he continues to be rejected until today. Even those that have the aqidah of Jahmim Safwan will never tell you that he's a believer. They say this is a mustad, this is a kafir for the beliefs that he held. But somehow his beliefs have seeped into the beliefs that you have. And you don't see a problem with that. Right? Like this is... No one says this guy was a believer. Because it's, it's not just about the fact that things that there's differences. It is even about the core things. Like Allah is nowhere and everywhere at the same time. You cannot have that. Right? Either Allah is nowhere all of the time. Then if Allah is nowhere, there's no God. Right? Or Allah is everywhere. But for Jahan and Safan, both of these existed at the same time. It's like, what, what, like you are describing Allah in a way that we can't. You can't even think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And then the other times throughout the Quran about the nearness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many times that He is close to us, not just as Habil Wari, but in different places. And the way that all of that is used means not of physical closeness, but of a different type of closeness that we understand from the language. Uh, except uh, we have in this, all the ayahs related to acting with Safa. Yeah. The Quran. And so we already find the explanation from the Sahaba, right? Like Mufassirin, like Abdullah ibn Abbas, like Hamasbuds. So when these people, they come after like 200, 300 years, yeah. bring these things. Were they not people who were showing them the specs that, no, this is not the correct explanation? Like the the people who understood the Quran from Rasulullah. This is how they believe it already. Yeah. So when they brought these ideas, but how, how, how did how it happen? They, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, 11.30, well, us, um, those that want to go, we're not going to stop you. I think, uh, what was the last line that you read? Man of the four. So, looking for sheep. Uh, oh, so you found this 14. Well, fix it. That's kind of, uh, yeah, fixed, yeah. That's kind of what he just mentioned now, right? That they, did, they denied the reports, right? So they could kind of. Yeah. Actually, this is perfect. Next week, we'll pick up from 
So, so it's 11.30. Those that want to leave, you are free to leave. We're not going to touch the text. I think I've explained all of the lines that we have read. The last of it, uh, he's, he's, he's saying the status of the people that rejected the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When it comes to us seeing Allah, when it comes to the nuzul of Allah, when it comes to the hands of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, they are a people that are going to be disgraced. They are people that are lying upon um, what we have in terms of what has reached us from the Quran and what has reached us from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is their states. This is what he's saying. This, this is how they are. And this is how we remember them forever and ever. And we'll see on the Day of Judgment what's going to happen. All right? um, but this is it for the class. We'll continue the discussion. But if you need to go, feel free to go. We'll